Okay, so with the recent release on Mass Drop of the Mass Drop Sennheiser collaboration, the HD6XX, and the fact that it's shipping kind of around right now and people are starting to receive them, there have been a, uh, a lot of questions about how much of an amp you really need to drive them. And, uh, and, and sometimes a question of whether or not you really need an amp at all. So in this video, I am going to attempt to answer those questions and kind of give a little bit of a response to the question of how much of an amp do I need for a, a certain headphone. There's a little bit of a difference between how much of an amp is needed to power a high, high impedance headphone like the HD650 and a, a planar magnetic like the LCD2s. So I'm not really going to get into that, that side of things. My overall goal for this video is more to answer how much of an amp you need for the HD650 or 6XX, as the case may be, and kind of how good, I guess, how good of an amp, how good of an experience, or what kind of an experience you can expect between a, uh, a lower end amp and a higher end amp. So I actually have a number of amps that I have tested my 650s on. So I started with the most basic thing, my phone, which is a, uh, a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. And then I have a little $30 SMSL SAP7 tiny battery powered portable headphone amplifier. I have a Fio E10K, which is a very popular choice for a... Uh, in a kind of entry level DAC amp. And then I recently got my hands on the Shipful of Two, which is another great uh, little DAC amp. Then I tried them on just the standalone Objective 2 amplifier, which I bought through Mass Drop for $80. If you don't get them through Mass Drop, you can get the Objective 2 for uh, somewhere, I think it's, it's a little over $100, maybe up to $150, depending on which company you buy it from. And then finally, I use the $400 Jotunheim from Shit Audio. A couple notes about the comparisons. I did the Shit Full of Two, the O2, and the Jotunheim all off of my Modi 2 DAC. Now, since the Fio E10K does not have a line in, I, that, that was kind of tested by itself. Oh, also the SAP7 was off of the Modi, and uh, my phone was just my phone. So I did use a few different DACs. I tried not to make this so much of a question of audio quality or kind of DAC quality, uh, but more of overall drivability, mostly just a comparison of the amps. I also used the stock HD650 cable, so single-ended. I did not test on the um, balanced output of the Jotunheim. And I used the uh, little included quarter inch to eighth inch adapter that came with the, uh, the HD650s. So when you're looking at, so when you're looking at buying a headphone amp, there are a few things to consider. The first thing is kind of what the impedance of your headphones are. How much do you really need? How much power do you need to drive them? The second is, what kind of music you listen to. If you're listening to a lot of classical or something that has a higher dynamic range or just tends to be kind of quieter overall, um, you'll need a lot, you'll need, to, you'll need to amp that signal a lot more to get to the same uh, loudness level. So for example, the, uh, the Player FUBAR 2000 can give you a, a replay gain kind of based on an, an averaged level so some songs, so it'll tell you how much uh, gain you need to apply to bring it up to that kind of standard or how much gain you need to bring it down. Um, so a lot of today's common songs in, uh, in rock and, uh, and pop and stuff that's really compressed, it'll have a replay gain of around uh, eh, like 5 to 10 is, is kind of average or more like 8 to 10 decibels where you actually need to bring it down uh, 8 to 10 decibels to get to that, that kind of bass line. And then most classical songs will have a replay gain to where you need to apply, say like three to five decibels of gain to bring it up to that, to that, uh, that kind of standard level. But then there are some songs like the uh, Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata that I have that require 19 decibels of gain to bring it up to that level. So you're talking about between, you know, the top end of, um, 
of some of today's popular, uh, really compressed music and the quietest classical music, there's a 30 to 35 decibel difference in volume. So that's, that's something to really take into consideration when you're looking at what kind of an amp you need. If you're listening to the really loud stuff, you might not need as strong of an amp as you do if you're listening to the, uh, the really quiet stuff. So finally, the last thing to consideration, or cons the last thing to consideration. So the last thing that you need to consider about an amp is kind of the overall quality of sound that you're looking for. Because you can have something like the SMSL SAP7, and this will actually get the 650s fairly loud. Like, it, it'll, it'll get them to, uh, to near painful listening levels. But, you know, out of a $30 little amp, the quality of the sound is lacking. Now, a lot of people will just say that uh, if it gets loud enough, like, like does, does your, do your headphones get loud enough? Does your amp make them loud enough? Then that's all you need. And you can kind of go by that. I mean, the differences aren't going to be tremendous, um, but it's, it's not really true. Now, I'm not really like an audio engineer. I can't entirely explain how these things uh, work, but there is more to it than just amplifying the signal. So not only is it just making the signal louder, it's not just about applying gain to the signal and making your headphones play the music loud enough. There is the, uh, the general like implementation, the circuitry inside of the amplifier. There are the components that are used. Higher end components will sound better. And part of it is the amp's ability to, to apply a, a consistent amount of power over a range of impedances because while the 650s are rated at 300 ohms, there is, I believe, around 100 hertz or 150 hertz. There's like a 600 ohm spike, and a lot of amps are not really able to power them well enough to get that bass to be as full as it could be. And I'll talk about this in a minute, but it's these things like the overall uh, implementation of the components, the quality of the components, and part of the implementation is the ability to drive the headphones across the entire range of their, the entire frequency spectrum and, you know, applying enough power to get those higher impedances um, loud enough. So all of these things are something that you really need to take into consideration when, uh, when looking at, at buying an amp. I'm going to try to not take too much time doing these things, going over each amp, because that would just make this video incredibly long. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm just going to go through each of these amps and kind of explain how well they power the, uh, the 650s and kind of what sound you can expect, what difference you can expect from them. Um, so first up, the phone. For normal music, today's general compressed loud music, your phone will get the headphones loud enough to listen to, but the, uh, the headphones aren't going to sound as good as they could, and you generally just won't be able to get it that loud. Next up, the SMSL SAP7. Something like this little headphone amplifier will get the headphones loud enough. It'll get them pretty loud, but this, this little thing has a couple of issues. One is not having that uh, enough power across the entire range to, to, really, get, um, to really get all of the, all of the, uh, the frequencies uh, more level. Um, so you'll end up with a more a brighter sound and it'll be a little bit harsher. And this little guy has a lot of distortion, which when you uh, match it with a good set of headphones, you'll really hear. Next up, the, the Fio. This thing is really a, a, a good little amp for the price point. If you're listening to a lot of modern music, uh, so things that are louder, a little bit more co compressed, less dynamic range, um, this will generally get uh, your music loud enough, and it does a pretty good job of powering the 650s. Part of the Fio is the fact that it, it does have a little bit of a different sound signature, and I think this comes from the implementation of this bass boost switch. Um, while the, the switch does increase the bass a lot, it still overall kind of has a little bit more basted boost. Basted boost. Has, has more basted boost. Has... Uh, <laughs> Has a little has a little bit more uh, boosted bass than say the uh, than any of the other solid state amps that I have really. 
but if you're like if this is the max amount that you can spend as long as you're not listening to uh, quieter music like classical or jazz or something that would need a lot of power then uh, then this this will do the job this will this is good enough right it's it's a good starting point but if you do have the extra money I think the Fio is around seventy dollars normally if you have the extra twenty five dollars or so plus you got to factor in shipping. Um, but if you have the extra money, the Ship Fulla 2 is definitely the better amp. So the, the Fulla 2 will get you a little bit louder. <clears throat> okay. So the Fulla 2 will get your headphones, will definitely get the headphones louder than the Fio E10K. And the sound is a little bit cleaner, a little bit, uh, a little bit sharper. And the, the biggest thing is, you know, you've got quarter inch input, which is great. You've got a, uh, I think that's another, yeah, that's an in. So you've got an auxiliary in, or a line in. Uh, you've got a preamp line out, so you can uh, preamp some powered speakers. And you've got just a regular line out and then a couple different power options. So just for the features on this thing alone, uh, it's worth it's worth the extra money over the Fio E10K. Plus, it'll give you a lot more power. So even with that, uh, the Moonlight Sonata, which needs 20 decibels of gain to bring it to that kind of average level in FUBAR, this will get the song loud enough. But the only, the only problem with that is if you're listening to a lot of really quiet classical, you'll need to really jack up the, the volume on here. And it's, it starts to, this amp does start to distort at the top end. I would, I mean, if you're, if you're just kind of like a once in a while listener of classical or jazz, then this is probably good. And most of the time, if you listen to anything modern that's more compressed, has a higher has a higher uh, volume range. This this little this little guy is perfect, especially for a hundred dollars for both a DAC and an amp. Uh, this is this is definitely a uh, a sweet spot. And then this is why a lot of people will go with the shit stack or the Modi Magni two uh, or you know Uber non Uber edition. Uh, can't won't say it doesn't matter because there is a difference. Um, but generally that's, that's the most popular thing you'll see, or like, uh, slightly less popular is an O2, which, but I believe the, the O2 and the Magni, and then the, uh, the, the Modi and the Odak are very, very comparable, and they cost pretty much the same. Okay, so there, there's a reason why a lot of people go with this range of amplifier, and that's because it does a great job. It it's, it's sound quality wise is roughly the same as the Fuller actually, um, but the O2 and definitely the Magni will get the 650s much louder, like on high gain. Uh, and this isn't the, the 6X, this is like the 3.3X uh, gain O2. Um, so the, the 6X one will get, get it even louder. Um, but on high gain, the, like I can't, even, even with classical, I can barely get it past halfway before it's, uh, before it's really loud, and at the top end, at those at those higher sound levels, the um, the uh, the O2 is a little bit cleaner than the Fuller. Finally, we come to the Jotunheim. So, when listening to the Jotunheim, this is where um, it kind of shows that the O2 Fuller aren't perfect. I guess they are very good. If that's all I had listened to, I would be like absolutely happy with it. But compared to the Jotunheim, they do get, as, as you increase the volume, they get a little uh, glaring, I would say. It's a little bit, the sound gets a little harsher, a little brighter. Um, it's a little, little bit more fatiguing, whereas the Jotunheim just has a nice smooth power across all of the, uh, the impedance range, frequency range, um, whatever it is. And it just, overall, the Jotunheim just sounds, it's a smoother sound. It's much cleaner. I mean, you can get the, uh, I, can, I can crank the Jotunheim on, on low gain. On low gain, the Jotunheim has about the same amount of power as the, uh, as the Fulla. So it'll get to about the same loudness. But cranked all the way up, the Jotunheim is still very clean, whereas the Fulla really starts to distort. So that's kind of one of the biggest differences between a higher end amp and a, a more budget friendly amp is that when you start to get at those, at those higher power ranges, the, uh, the more expensive amp will stay cleaner.
And then also, just to kind of answer a question, like, do you really need, is, do you really get so, so much better sound quality out of a uh, $400 amp over the $100 O2? And the answer is the, uh, the sound quality difference is, it's noticeable. Um, you can, you can hear the sound quality difference, but, you know, is it that much better? I mean, it's, it's really up to your preference. Um, but the biggest thing is, especially with something like the Jotunheim, is that I can plug a pair of IEMs into it and I can turn the, the volume pod up just a little bit and it'll stay perfectly balanced. The noise floor will be like almost nothing. Um, whereas the O2, there will be a little bit more noise. The, uh, the volume pot starts out kind of imbalanced. All, all of them do, it's just the better the volume pot, the, the, the quieter it is when it comes into balance. So you definitely get, you know, better, better components, you get better sound and something with like the Fuller, I can't really like even with the, uh, the LCD twos. All right. Editing Jay here. And I'm just going to interject really quickly because I completely failed to make my points on while uh, filming this part of the video. Um, so the idea was that the, or what I was trying to say is that the, the shit full of two almost has too much power for something like the LCD twos, because once you get past that point to where the volume pot is balanced, it's just at kind of a casual listening level for me, maybe just a little bit over. And then if you bump the volume up anymore, it starts to get too loud. Unless, of course, I'm like in the mood to listen to really loud music. But even then, um, I'm still keeping the volume at or around 9 o'clock. So 25% of the way through its entire range of movement. Whereas something like the Jotunheim gives you that much finer of control over the volume for a, uh, a wide range of headphones and impedances, everything from the most sensitive IEMs to something like the uh, Sennheiser HD 650s. So in conclusion, how much of an amp do you need? If all you have is $100, this is a very good starting point. It has a great DAC. It actually has the uh, the same DAC as the Modi. This has the same DAC chip as the Modi 2. Uh, obviously, a slightly different Im implementation, so it might not be uh, quite as good. I don't know, but it should be pretty close. So for the same amount of money, you've got a DAC and an amp. Um, so this is definitely a good starting point if all you really have is $100. It will definitely get your uh, your 650s or 6XXs loud enough, and it'll sound pretty darn good. If you have, you know, a couple hundred dollars to spend on a DAC and an amp, then either the O2 ODAC or the Modi Magni stack. So the O2 ODAC Modi Magni stacks are around $200, and that's really kind of the sweet spot between pretty good quality and enough power to get the headphones plenty loud, and uh, plus you have a good DAC. And finally, if you have the money, if you have the budget for uh, something like the Jotunheim, definitely go with that. It'll make the uh, the 650s or the 6XXs sound uh, their absolute best. Well, actually, I can't say that. The best that I've heard, because I've that's that's the uh, the the most high-end amp that I've heard. Yeah, so I can't really speak to, you know, anything over the Jotunheim, but the Jotunheim is definitely, if you have the money, it's worth the extra money over, say, the O2 or the Magni 2, because the sound is just that much better. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I did a good enough job of uh, explaining things and kind of answering the, uh, the amp question for the 650s, 6XXs, 600s, uh, maybe some of the bare dynamics. As always, any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments. It's always good chatting with people and getting their uh, their different points, the different points of view. Yeah, again, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one, which will likely be a review of this little guy. So stay tuned.